The RG556 is the handheld that I am going to keep. So I've had the RG556 for about a week now. And right off the bat, when I picked it up, if you just give me a second, I will actually pick it up right now. Right off the bat, I realized how dang big this thing is. So I'll put an image on screen, but this, like the screen of this device is the same size as the Retro Pocket 2S's like whole part, like whole thing. So coming from the Retro Pocket 2S, that was a bit of a surprise. And then, you know, again, I picked it up, just looking at it, oh my God, it's so big. And then I grabbed it. And if you just look at the back, the like grips are awesome. They are, there is a lot of wasted space that you can see with the clear model, but the thing is of just how, you know, nice the grips are, it felt so good. And then, of course, this clear blue colorway is awesome. If you look at it, you can just see all the internals. I mean, it's all covered, but like on the front, you can see all like the contact pads and whatnot. It's really nice like to have like a glass look. Some might not like it. I totally get that, but I think it's very cool to be able to see so far into a device, even though it's covered with like a heat sink thing. And also, you know, coming from the Retro Pocket 2S, right off the bat, there's a nice fan on the back. That black circle is the fan, and it's a nice addition when you're doing like high-end switch emulation. By high-end, I mean like, you know, high-end 2D. It's really nice to have. I know the Retro Pocket 4 has this, but it's just something I noticed coming from a lot of handhelds that didn't have a fan. You know, the Nintendo Switch had no fan. Either that or, you know, the fan's, like, very quiet and barely turns on. The Retro Pocket 2S had no fan. The Mew Mini Plus had no fan. And, like, my laptop had a fan. And I know that that happened, that was used a lot. But, like, I, it's new to have a fan on devices to me. But also, when I picked it up, the downside, why are these controls so small? Amarnik, you had such, like, a big thing. And you had to make the ABXY, seriously, this small? Like, it just doesn't really make sense to me why you would do that. When you have, you know, so much real estate, you should just be able to, like, make your things bigger. Like, the analog sticks are just switch sticks. Like, come on. You could have found, like... I don't know what size Steam Deck sticks are because I don't own a Steam Deck. But you could have found like sticks like that. Why did you have to use Switch sticks? But I got I'm used to Switch sticks. You know I use the Switch often, so it's you know a welcome addition. Um. So on that topic of being big, the device has this gorgeous panel. Look at that. It is a 5.5 5.5 inch 1080p OLED display with hdr i think and it's really nice it, it well it's not good on you know on camera because you're watching it through like your phone or your laptop that probably isn't you know oled and if it is you know like the camera is picking out some weird stuff it's not great but it is so good in person and it's a bit big in my opinion. You didn't really need to put that big of a screen hammer, Nick. Like, the information on it is just a lot. But it is good to have a big screen. It's very immersive. The Retro Pocket 2S with, a, with its 3.5 inch 480p display. I mean, I got to play my games. Cool. But, like, it wasn't as good as I thought it would be. Um, like, immersion wise. But this one. I turned it on and I just felt, you know, right in love with like, oh my god, you know, I get to like see this so much better. And it was just gorgeous. But I talked about, you know, how bad the analog sticks were. But the analog sticks actually aren't too bad. They have a digital-ish input. So what I mean by that is I'll put a, like an, a video or an image on screen. But it is like it moves in a plus pattern. It's called cardinal direction snapping. When you're close to up but not up, you know, just count is up and then you'll that's the same for down left and right but it's not optimal but the thing is <laughs> it's actually pretty good for platformers more on that later and then it'll also just do a really quick zero to a hundred thing so that if your like stick is not actually in like you know it gets a bit 
like far away from zero and a bit far away from 100 it'll just still count as zero and 100 like zero meaning the stick hasn't moved at all and then 100 meaning the stick has moved like all the way to a location it'll just count that as like you know zero or 100 you know there is some mid ranges but it's definitely not as much as other devices like the switch the retro pocket 2s and those are the two that i've tested but i've seen that almost every other device that isn't an amaranic device has you know good like sticks that really aren't as bad as this but the digitalist inputs are okay for games like super mario wonder and celeste where you want to move up down left right and the diagonals people say are hard to hit but i've noticed are not that bad you can just like you know you just have to make sure to not get like close to diagonal you just got to do diagonal and it's not that bad because in games like celeste you know i've tried to do a jump and then like i i'm trying to dash diagonal uh, i'm trying to dash like to the right that's to the left on your camera but to the right and then i accidentally you know got a diagonal because i was like slightly off it's good for games like that where you are mostly doing cardinal directions but i get that if you're trying to do diagonals it is frustrating and the sticks aren't concave which from the retro pocket to us it was very annoying concave lets it just like met mold your finger better with like a curve like that and it just feels good to just like plop your thumb into but these are kind of like pushing up on your thumb which isn't great of course, you know, if you never tried one before and you've just been used to switch sticks, it's not really that bad. But coming from the Retro Pocket 2S, it just felt weird and out of place. But what's cool is the triggers. So these triggers, if I can get it on camera, have something blocking it. You see this piece of plastic right there? So nothing can get in. That can't be said about the Retro Pocket 2S. A lot of hair, I mean a lot, but like a few pieces sometimes went in and it's very frustrating to look at because i have the clear green and it just like goes right through it's like oh my god it looks horrible but with things blocking it it's great and they're analog triggers so you know you have an analog input you can go bit and then you can go a bit more and then you can go fully yeah you have a wide range of motion and this is used for gamecube horizon chase and all these different things um it's really not that bad to no <laughs> it is good to have these analog inputs and it's you know it takes up space it can be a bit finicky but it's perfectly fine and it's it's very cool most of like devices a lot of devices in this price category have it but some don't and it basically just makes some games like Super Mario Sunshine really hard to play because you can't, you know, like, input certain things. Alright, so I sadly noticed that the D-pad isn't great. So, there's a lot of what's called false diagonals, where this was found on the RGC5XX2. And then you just press an input, but then you go slightly, like, to the right, slightly to the left, and it will count as, you know, a diagonal. So if I can get this on camera, I'm pressing down right now, but then I move it to the side slightly and it like registers as, as digital. And I know you can't see the D-pad, but if you can see my finger where it's moving, it's really not moving much. And I'm not even touching the right side of my D-pad. So it's kind of great. It's like not great to have a very touchy D-pad. This will probably be good for like Hadoukens and whatnot. It'll be very easy because you can just easily get that like semicircle quarter circle <laughs> i don't play street fighter but it's annoying for like accuracy games like celeste and then technically mario the abxy are fine like they're they have a nice click to them i don't even think that got picked up by the mic <laughs> but it's nothing special i just wish they made it slightly bigger and it you know would have been great um so next is like just the grips i know that i already talked about this but come on the grips look awesome and they feel awesome they mold my hands really well and they just feel really solid um yeah so next is you know i'm not a good person to talk about the screen but i can definitely just tell right off the bat that the screen is nice and vibrant if i load up a game real quick this will take 
actually a bit. But if I load up a game and I'll you know just put it to, to the screen, you just see that the screen is so much more vibrant than anything else. It won't be picked up well on camera, but a 5.5 1080p OLED screen just is really good. And it's nothing that you know it beats everything that I've seen before. Here's the screen. Like it is gorgeous. It is so much nicer than the Switch screen. Quite a bit. So much nicer than the Switch screen. So much nicer than like any 480p panel I've used. And it can get really bright. So I'll max out the brightness right here. You won't be able to see any colors because that's how cameras work. But like, it gets bright. Um, it's really nice. And then OLED, you know, allows for inky blacks and nice whites. It's just super nice to have. Yeah. Um, so next is the battery life. The battery life is awesome. So I really love it. Like battery life wise, I, you know, have been recently playing Super Mario Wonder and I've, you know, gone through the thing, but it, you know, the battery life gets me through the night. No problem. And in the morning I just plug it in for a bit and then I can, you know, like bring it wherever I want if I need to. Like I just hung out with my friends today, you know, and I was playing it last night, and then it, like, you know, I brought it out today, I didn't even charge it at all, and it was sitting at a, cl it's cl sitting at a clean 61%, I was playing Switch games for an hour last night, it's really good, so, I've even seen, like, people get, maybe, I've seen people get 15 hours of battery life, just in, like, PS1 games, and, it's very cool that we live in a world where you can, you know, play your games for that long. And it's just awesome. Um, so, if this is a device that, you know, you're just going to, like, chuck in your car, you want to bring to work, and then, you know, oh, you want to, like, just play a few games, maybe you have, like, a coworker that also has a retro handheld, you just pull it out and play with them. You don't even have to, like, think about charging it. You can just leave it in the car, and then, oh, it's getting low, and then just plug it in. Like, it's very easy to use it is it the battery life is just awesome um i don't have any complaints about it and lastly is the cpu so i've been talking to this guy named tech toy tinker he has a youtube channel um i'll put his like logo thing icon on screen but what was cool is he was explaining that the CPU on this device is actually really good. If I can find it, it seems to have, it seems to be like on par with devices like there's a Snapdragon device. I think like the Snapdragon, it'll be on screen. I'm not actually sure off the top of my head, but it is, you know, it has a good CPU. But the problem is where it falls is its GPU. So its CPU is, you know, on par with, like, a good Snapdragon device. That's good. But its GPU is on par with a May rock chip device. If you don't know what rock chip is, they make the, like, um, RK3326, RK3356 that you find in so many devices. Um, and the thing is, the GPU just can't really match with those ones. So... The idea is the CPU, you know, can do a lot of the tasks, but things like switch emulation require a good GPU to be able to push through the rest of like the cal like the harder calculations, you know, the repetitive ones. So then it's with a bad GPU, you need to like it's the CPU has to do more to keep up. But the thing is the CPU, even though it's good, it's not as good. And devices like the Game Force Ace just kind of beat out, like beat it out, in things like um, Switch emulation because of that GPU. So that's a bit frustrating, but I totally get why you know they didn't, they weren't able to do that. So if you just want raw performance, like Game Force. Game Force Ace, Retro Pocket Four, Retro Pocket Four Pro, Odin Two, if you had the budget for it. The Odin Two is, you know, the best price to performance, but the thing is, you're missing out. Apart from the Odin Two, you're missing out on like these good grips. You're missing out on this nice screen. You're missing out on these LED lights. <laughs> um, and there's just so much.
cool things that is on you know the RT five five six. The RT Pocket Four Four and Four Pro have like grips and whatnot to make it like kind of match like what this can do. But the thing is, you know, those grips you'll have to like carry them with you, and then they're silicone, so they don't feel as good. Like you know, maybe they feel good to you, but like. I don't like how it like changes textures. This thing stays at as the same texture. It's built in. You don't have to worry about your grips. The carrying case just holds the grips. It's just awesome. And I totally get, you know, why somebody would go, this doesn't have as much performance for the price. And, you know, it's a fair assumption. But it has so much to offer. And Amarnik has been doing a lot of sales recently with stuff like eBay sales where I got mine. TikTok shop has some, in my opinion, sketchy sales. I don't like it, but they have some sketchy sales that you can like use, and you can um, find like really cheap bundles with RG five five six, and you can get them for like a hundred dollars. I've seen people from TikTok shop, and I got mine for like one hundred sixty four. And if you can get it between hundred and like hundred seventy, it is in the like. The 150 to 170 is in the price range of the Retro Pocket 4. And, you know, now you have to decide between those two. But if you can get it any lower than that, it's, like, not in the price range of the Retro Pocket 4. So, you, there's, like, nothing else that can beat it out. And it's, like, great for price and for performance in that area. Um, alright. So, I really hope you enjoyed the video. And I hope you had a great day. And I just don't let anyone ruin that, okay? Be happy. Hope you like the audio quality. See you.